welcome to this, and this will probably be a fairly long video. I'm going to warn you ahead of time, um, if you haven't already noticed by the time. Um, as I'm going to talk about a lot of things, uh, just kind of get caught up on a few things. I'm going to talk about WC38, which happened uh, yesterday, or Sunday, on um, that happened during the Royal Rumble, so I wasn't able to review it, and I wanted to review that. As uh, once again, WEC put on a good show. I have yet to see them um, from since I've been watching them, which was um, <coughs> uh, earlier last year. Um, I have yet to see a bad show from them. Um, Colazzo versus Porto, uh, which was a boxing match from last week, um, which has gotten a lot of attention, which I wanted to talk about as well. And Mosley versus Margarito which was from this past weekend, took place during the Affliction card. So I wasn't able to watch that either, but I was finally able to watch that. Um, kind of the fallout from that, a lot of things happening um, in, with both, uh, just a lot of news and that sort of thing that I wish to cover. We're going to see if we can do this. Uh, like I said, this might be a fairly long video, but we'll start with the WEC stuff because the boxing stuff's all going to meld into kind of what I want to talk about because, uh, yeah, we'll get into that at the end. Um... We start out with uh, Jose Aldo versus Ronaldo Perez, um, WC38. Uh, this was fairly good in that it had a fairly good little ending, a dramatic ending, I would say, where um, Aldo hit a knee, and uh, that was it. And it was a pretty vicious knee. It was kind of, you know, like I said, I, you know, um, I have yet to see a WEC show that I thought was bad. <coughs> Uh, for those of you that have never seen WEC, and probably most of you haven't, um, WEC is Zufa, who owns UFC. They're lighter weight guys, um, which, you know, to them, not a lot of people want to watch. That's unfortunate because these guys are like in boxing with the lighter weights. They're far more exciting, and uh, there's usually a lot of action in these fights, and it makes it a lot, a lot better. You're not going to get to see a lot of stars. Um, it's a lot of up-and-coming guys for the most part, but... Um, very good stuff. This was a good little fight and uh, a lot of fun. Like I said, ended with a knee and uh, very good. I, I was pretty impressed with Aldo, to be completely um, honest. Uh, I had never seen him before, but um, the guy looked pretty good. And um, apparently he has amazing jujitsu, which uh, we haven't even seen yet. So that was pretty crazy, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> Next we had uh, Velafort versus Mike Campbell. Um, both were debuting in WEC, and uh, this was another one of those just, eh, you know, it was what it was, I, I guess, is what you would kind of call it. Um, because once again, a guy went to his back and once he or went got on his back, this was getting hit, rolled up onto his stomach, and basically just sat there with his hands over his head and got finished and the fans booed it. And I think the reason why the fans booed it, I, I think a lot of people who were watching it did that. Well, what I got from was it was because I don't think they thought the ref should have stopped it, but um, I don't know what else the ref was supposed to do because the guy wasn't able to do anything and he was getting pounded in the back of the head. And, uh, yeah, you can't have that uh, really kind of uh, stuff. But it was a very good, compelling fight, lots of good action. Once again, um, as with the smaller guys, you do get that and... Uh, there you go. Next we had uh, one of the dark fights, uh, the fights that was before the TV that they decided to show, which was Frank Gomez versus Scott Jurgensen. Um, this didn't last long as uh, Jurgensen got a guillotine, a very deep, nasty guillotine. Um, it looked like he had it on before, and then uh, he got it on really bad. Um, Gomez just, I, I, would, I would put it up against uh, just inexperience, but um, it, it didn't last long at all. And, Eh, was what it was. Then we got the fight that probably most people wanted to see, which was Faber versus Jeans Pulver. Um, this also didn't last very long. Um, they came out. They did talk about the fact that Pulver probably didn't really want to fight this fight. Um, he just lost his best friend. There was lots of other stuff going on, um, but that he, you know, he was willing to fight it. Fight had a lot of stuff going on in his life, and uh, still went out and did it. And uh, Faber, of course, was coming off of the. Uh, the loss to Brown, and uh, given the fact that Brown had not been cleared yet, Faber wasn't able to take him on, so they decided to do this fight, and um, didn't last long as Faber hit one of the, just a nasty, nasty bo uh, body shot. As a guy that's watched boxing for a long time, it was a nasty body shot that just really hurt Pulver, and Pulver just couldn't do anything afterwards. Um, his hands went down, uh, Faber jumped on him, and that was pretty much it. 
Um, it was pretty nasty and showed that, yes, even MMA, um, body shots are important, believe it or not. And then we got the main event, Jamie Varner versus Donald um, Carone, I guess was his name. Um, this was very good, even though it was a bit one-sided, I thought, for Jamie Varner, but it was very good. Um, David Carno Carry on, I guess. I don't know. I'm not going to try. But um, he can take a beating. And uh, hopefully we get a... <coughs> this was a title shot for the light WC lightweight title. Hopefully we'll get um, a rematch of this. I would imagine we would. Uh, really good fight. Um, for the most part, Varner was in control most of the fight, uh, getting on top of Corone and basically beating the hell out of him. But Corone was a tough dude. And he kept getting up, kept, you know... Uh, just kept going and kept walking him down. It was just, it was, it was pretty sick. <coughs> but, um, I kept hitting him. I mean, this was just a really, really good fight. Uh, it didn't end very well as, as Ver Varner was down on the ground. They were getting up. Uh, Crone tried to hit him with a knee and, uh, was not aware that Varner had fallen down on all fours. Can't knee a guy when he's got, uh, when he's three points on the ground. And uh, so it was, it, was, it was ruled accidental. Werner wasn't able to continue. The fans booed the crap out of it. It did look kind of iffy, I will say. But, hey, a guy's going to do what he's going to do. And um, Werner wasn't too happy. The fans were kind of, were kind of very loud and, and, and kind of assholey, to be particularly honest, um, during this whole fight, during this. But, it was, but, you know, they were lively, so I guess that was okay. Um, Werner did say he would, he would love to fight uh, Corona again. I would imagine we will get a rematch as they did go to the cards, and um, uh, Warner did win on a split decision. So with a split decision, and the fact that it did end in a kind of iffy way, uh, you know, we'll probably see this fight again. It was a good fight, and it was a um, entertaining fight. As as I said, most WEC fights are pretty fairly entertaining. Um, I wish we could see more of these WEC guys, particularly the lighter weight guys, um, on UFC cards because I, you know. Uh, to me, uh, you know, WEC had the fight, they had the not only the fight of the year last year, but um, who I can't even remember who it was, um, and um, that's how well I remember, but I just can't remember the guy's name. And um, also on the same card as as that fight, they also had the uh, the best card I saw all year too. Just an amazing, amazing stuff. I wish I could remember. I should have looked it up before I started the video, but oh well. We will. I will live. Um, I'm sure someone will probably figure out which one I was talking about, but eh, it's not important, um, in the grand scheme of things, but, uh, again, if you've never seen a WEC show, definitely check it out, I believe the next one is going to be in March, um, it's actually going to be in Corpus Christi, Texas, it's not too far from me, it's probably about four or five hours, and, um, I am actually considering going, uh, to check that out, just because, I, like I said, I've yet to see a WEC show that I didn't find entertaining, and, uh, my best friend has just started getting really into MMA, um, as of as of late, and I think he would enjoy it, uh, particularly since the action in WC is usually pretty good. So um, there is that. So that was pretty groovy, all things considered. Um, next we had, um, and I'm going to go back a week because uh, I had a lot of people ask about this, uh, um, some boxing matches, um, and I'm going to go back before. I'm going to talk about um, Calazo, 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 that was his name, Calazo versus Berto from um, from last week. Um, this was the first fight for uh, Boxing After Dark on HBO for the year. This was a very, very good fight. Back and forth stuff. Um, very good. Uh, kind of a bad decision. Not, not a, I shouldn't say not a bad decision, but one of the judges just... Uh, like I've told people, this was everything I loved and hated about boxing. It's a great boxing match, and then not that I disagreed with the outcome, but the judging was just kind of, what the hell were you guys seeing? And, um, but very good fight. Uh, we'll, pro uh, we'll probably see a rematch. Um, and to the point of, you know, a lot of people have been talking about, do the ring ratings really matter? And I will tell you, after this fight and seeing what happened after this fight, I will say they have a lot of legitimacy in my eyes as Colazzo didn't move down, didn't move up. After this fight, he put a very good showing and... And Berto went up. I think that shows a lot about these rankings, particularly in a division that is stacked, would undoubtedly be an understatement. And um, hopefully they're going to fight again. It sounded like HBO wanted to see the fight again. It was a very good fight, excellent fight. And uh, 
Berto seemed like he wanted to do it again, and uh, particularly since I don't see <coughs> he's going to have to wait till the upper echelon of the division kind of weeds itself out before he probably gets a fairly good shot. So it would be a good fight for him that way, too. And, uh, hey, it, it was what it was. Again, the judging was a little eh, but um, it was what it was. And, uh, you know, uh, very good fight. Um, they're, they're still showing it, actually, because um, it is it is considered an early candidate for fight of the year and uh, I would definitely say check it out <coughs> though they did um, when they were doing and I will talk about this the production for um, the opening production and the little you know movie stuff they did for uh, particularly for Berto who they were trying to hype up because he was kind of the chosen one for this because he's he's undefeated and um, uh, looks I think he's undefeated yeah um, and looked pretty good and uh, is looks like he's going to be a pretty fairly good prospect. And as Colazzo is is one of those guys which just guys have a hard time with. I mean, he's been in there with just about everybody. He's been robbed a couple times. Uh, Max Kellerman was one that was the guy doing uh, color on this, which I loved because Max Kellerman, you know, is one of those guys that will call boxing out on its bullshit, which is good. And um, which he did during the fight, which at, during uh, the post fight when he was talking to Colazzo, so that was good. And um, but definitely a good fight. I would recommend everybody checking out. But during the whole like hype package thing, it blew UFCs away, um, as you would expect. You know, I, I always bring this up, but if UFC wants to, you know, claim that they are the best on, I will get to this too in a moment. Claim that they're the best on pay per view, which you know the buy rates, you know, have pretty much killed a lot of uh, boxing stuff, uh, has pretty much, you know, they're going to have to, you know, up up it and actually, you know, do similar type of stuff, because it pretty much blew it away, but on that card, and uh, we, this was a continuing theme apparently, but none of us knew it at the time, they brought up the fact that Berto's dad um, was trained MMA fighters, and that, you know, he did decided to not go that way, they did bring up the fact that Berto's dad uh, wanted to uh, be a boxer, but he was a little too old to be a boxer, so he became a pro wrestler. And apparently, I think people are over hyping this a little bit. They showed one of his pro wrestling fights and then said it was a, you know, it was an MMA fight, which apparently wasn't the case. But eh, whatever, I, I didn't feel like they were trying to degrade uh, MMA any more than you know than you probably would by just saying Berto had decided to, you know, become a boxer instead of an MMA fighter, which you know they can wave their little flags for that for. But again, like I said, that this was not this was a continuing theme. Apparently we'll find out later as Mosley and Margarito, because uh one of the big stories coming out of this, there's a lot of big stories coming out of this, was the fact, and I will get back to this, um Oscar De La Hoya, which helped promote this, uh, was not at the show. He was at the MMA Affliction show. Which um if you don't know what MMA is because you're watching this because of the because I'm talking about boxing, um Affliction <clears throat> it's kind of a new startup company. Probably, you know, it, they're they are a new company that's spending lots of money that they don't have. Um, Golden Boy has come in to help promote. Um, he was helping, so he's affiliated with them. He decided to be there uh, on the show. Uh, they announced that De La Hoya took a five million dollar payday to be at that show instead of this show. De La Hoya's people have now said that was complete crap. Um, I would imagine he probably did get paid to get there, but I couldn't can't see why he would get paid five million dollars when he helped to promote pro promote co promote the show. That just seems kind of stupid to me. But HBO was definitely pissed off he was not there. Um, and Lampley or not Lampley, um, it wasn't Lampley? Who was it? It was uh, it was uh, I want to say Letterman, but it wasn't Letterman. It was um. I can never remember his name. Larry Merchant. Larry Merchant took a crack. He was the one that kind of took a crack and said, you know, it would take him to be paid $5 million to go to one of those shows, too. Yes, Larry, that's fine and wonderful. Um, you know, Larry, like it or not, MMA is kicking your ass when it comes to buy rates and that you need to live with it. But um, that was not the last time we will hear about this, unfortunately. But So they took a little crack at that. And uh, but then we got to the actual boxing match, Mosley versus Margarito. And before this even took place, uh, this is so smart on Margarito's people's part. You don't do crap like this in California. Um, <clears throat> Margarito was found to have some sort of substance, plaster-like substance, on his uh, on his wrappings, on his gloves, 
which uh, meant he was loading his gloves, which is, you know, <coughs> not a good thing. I'm sure Margarito's fans will say, well, he was just, you know, everyone knows Mosley Juices, and he was just, you know, trying to do something he could do to counter Mosley Juicy. I am sorry, but, you know, I've watched boxing long enough to know that, you know, steroids in boxing, most people do look the other way, and I'm sure if boxing didn't have to test for it, they wouldn't because the feeling in boxing is if you're willing to go on steroids, while it is cheating, you're doing it to your own body, and so it's this sport where you beat up your own body anyways. So, you know, a lot of guys look at it that way. But um, when you go to that extra stretch and start loading up your gloves, that is looked down upon majorly by a lot of people. It's going to start asking a lot of questions for Margarito, which is unfortunate. Maybe this was the first time he did it. Maybe it wasn't the first time he did it. And to be caught in California is not the good thing. I don't think Margarito himself will probably get punished for this. But it happened in California, so we don't know. It very well could be, and that could pretty much, you know, screw up a lot of stuff in the next year of boxing. I don't see him getting, maybe getting fined, but um, I don't see him getting suspended. I imagine his trainer will probably fall on the sword if anyone's going to get suspended. It'll probably be him. But, um, again, uh, yeah, not good stuff. And then to take it all off, he looked, he got his ass kicked. Uh, Mosley came out and looked like Mosley of old. It was kind of like, you know, Oscar's gone. I'm not in Oscar's shadow anymore, and so I'm going to come out and be the fighter that everyone always knew he was. Um, and he kicked ass for nine rounds until finally TKOing Margarito. Very good fight. Um, I said this, I believe, um, on the Pacquiao De La Hoya fight that, um, you know, one thing about boxing is a guy can, you can have an ass kicking um, and it be a good fight because it's entertaining in some weird, perverse way. And this is one of those fights where it was, you know, and, and Margarito did fight back. It wasn't like it was completely one-sided, but I wouldn't have given any of the rounds to Margarito at all. But, uh, you know, this was a very good fight, though. I, I will say that. Um, and uh, excellent stuff. But, uh, and I would, you know, very, very good stuff. Um, you know, Margarito is, is going to take on Cotto at Madison Square Garden. Um... And Mosley has just thrumped himself in the middle of, you know, probably the deepest division there is in boxing, period. Um, you know, I, I don't know who all there is for him to fight. I don't know how, who's really going to fight him. I guess he could fight Cotto if, if Cotto beats Margarito. Um, I, I, you know, they brought up Ricky Hatton, <coughs> I believe. You know, Hatton definitely wants to take on Pacquiao and get that payday. Um, maybe he could fight the winner of Pacquiao. Uh, Hatton, though, I don't think Pacquiao really wants to take on anybody else at this weight class. Maybe Hatton, and then maybe uh, Mayweather, because he knows Mayweather would be closer to his own size, where a lot of these guys are, are going to be a lot bigger than him. Um, so, all of that's going to be interesting to see, and uh, there we go. But um, Mosley definitely came out looked like the Mosley of old. Um, definitely looked the better fighter at at this point than De La Hoya does, and I don't know how many people would have thought that at the time. Uh, this fight did draw a crap load of people, which I don't think should really surprise anybody, compare, considering it was where it was, and uh, apparently there were a lot of Mexican fans there from Margarito, which I don't think really surprises a lot of people. But, um, but we will have to watch on the whole, you know, hand-wrapping thing and exactly where that goes. Um, like I said, I don't expect it to go anywhere, even though it did happen in California. In all places, you don't want this to happen. California is it, because they do, you know... They, they are, out of the big four uh, bossing commissions, they are the ones that are probably the most stringent and the ones that will, you know, go after you if you do something stupid. So, there you go. Um, <clears throat> but, and going on with the HBO kind of taking shots at MMA stuff, a lot of guys that were there, a lot of press guys who were also big fans of MMA. Um, now, like I said, uh, you know, Merchant saying that, and you know what? And apparently they just signed Merchant to a bigger deal to a for another what two years? Which you know, Larry Merchant hasn't been the same for I would say about two years now. Um, I would you know, there's a part of me that really says I wish to God that um, that. Uh, that Letterman um, could do play-by-play. -play. I would imagine he can't do play-by-play, -play, or he would have already done play-by-play. Because -play. the only time I really like Merchant is when him and Letterman are, you know, at each other's throats because they disagree on a scoring of a round. It's the only time I enjoy it. 
Um, so, and I think Letterman at this point actually, you know, is more interesting to listen to than than uh, than Merchant. But that's just me. Though I would imagine that's probably why they brought in Max Kellerman. And to Larry Merchant, I would say this: maybe you need to figure out where where uh, which fight. Max Kellerman was watching that night, or even if he was at the Affliction show itself, because that wouldn't surprise me, as he is one of he is one of the champions of MMA, particularly within the boxing community, as he does like both, such as myself. So there we go with that. But apparently, also at the show, it wasn't just HBO taking the shots, but it was also a lot of the press people as well um, were taking the shots. Not at Affliction, and, and this is kind of an important fact, because you have seen these two take note of this. They were not taking shots at Affliction, at the fact that they were supposedly spending $5 million on uh, Oscar De La Foy showing up. That's not apparently what, if you read a lot of the reports from there, what, what the media guys were taking shots at. They were taking shots at MMA in general. And UFC needs to realize this, that right now, if the, you know, that if if you if HBO is going to continue to go this route, and it does look like they are going to start taking more shots at MMA, um, if that is the case, then UFC needs to realize that they are in a PR battle, and a PR battle that they are that they don't have the ammunition that boxing does. Boxing has most of the press and most of the media behind them. Um, you add this to the fact of the New York Times are a bunch of, either A, they're a bunch of idiots, or B, they're just corrupt as there can be. Because uh, given the fact, for those of you who don't know, one of the reasons why MMA is banned in New York is because of the New York Times. They went, they went after MMA back in the 90s to get it banned. They got it banned. Um, and now with UFC and the MMA community trying to get uh, it back into New York so that they can run Madison Square Garden, um, which trust me, um, there's two people. There's two people that this would affect with particularly UFC because you figured UFC would be the ones doing it, running Madison Square Garden. One would be the WWE. The New York Times does not give a crap about Vince McMahon. The other would be boxing, and you got to think that the boxing promoters. Um, probably have something to do with this because they do have deep pockets and they probably do, you know, have some something to do with this. And also, apparently, the Fertellas have, who own UFC, have enemies in New York City, or New York, uh, particularly the um, the unions. At some point, I read this. Apparently, the unions don't like them too much, and that probably has something to do with it too, um, because a lot of the stuff that they said of why. Uh, MMA shouldn't be legal. It's a bunch of garbage, and you could say about the same thing with boxing. And you know, boxing is very heralded in uh, in New York, particularly New York City. So I think that was a bunch of garbage. But UFC needs to realize this, and UFC needs to realize this pretty quickly. Um, that you know that they are behind as far as that goes, and. Uh, you know that they need to do something about it, and I think the thing to do about that is basically putting on better shows. And what I mean by better shows is shows that the general public will enjoy, not just the die-hard MMA fans. Which means UFC, and I know they probably don't want to hear this, and I know people will disagree. You have to, if affliction falls, you have to pay the heavyweights what the heavyweights actually should be getting paid. Because yes, it is more exciting to watch little guys beat the crap out of each other. There's no doubt about that. But there is something far better of watching two big mofos beat the crap out of each other. For whatever reason. I don't know what it is. It's always been that way. People like watching two big mofos beat the crap out of each other. And if you're not willing to pay the guys that are big the money that they probably should be paying. I'm not saying what affliction is paying these guys is right because they're so far out of whack. It's insane. But what UFC wants to pay these guys isn't right either. It's definitely they want to underpay them. That's not good. You're not going to get the le the elite heavyweights. That was the problem when Pride was around. That's why the light heavyweight division was the featured division in the UFC because they couldn't get the heavyweights because all the heavyweights were fighting in Japan because they were fight well for various reasons of course because they had the drug problem. You had the drug issues as well. But anyways, but a lot of it had to do with the fact that Pride would pay them more money and. You know, they can still make more money elsewhere, and UFC is going to have to come to that realization. I don't think they ever will, but that's one of the things they're going to have to do. <coughs> and, you know, they probably do need to fire back a little bit because, um, you know, it's just kind of the way it is. I, if 
like I like I said, I wouldn't surprise me if Max Kellerman was actually at the Affliction show, to be honest, or if he was watching the Affliction show. Um, that's my take. That's what I would say. But uh, anyways, I, I definitely think that uh, you know it looks like HBO has decided we're going to start taking shots at MMA, uh, particularly after it looks like the last two um, before this last uh, UFC pay per view, which probably didn't do very good in buy rates or did about average buy rates, maybe even less since since it was on tape delay. But uh, the two before that, um, the two that ended the year for UFC, those shows both did apparently over a million buys which um, I don't know when the last time boxing had two shows back-to-back to a million buys. So there is that, and which is good, because particularly the last show that UFC put on for the year, the Ultimate, um, it shows that people are willing to buy super cards, and maybe we will get more of them. Hopefully they will set it up better so that as, you know, after this weekend with uh, Penn versus GSP, um, it's going to be kind of dead as far as, you know, quality cards until we get to uh, Mir versus um, Lesnar. Um, so there is that. And, uh, but, you know, as I said, uh, HBO did say that about uh, Oscar. Uh, apparently they weren't too happy with Oscar, so they said that. Then Oscar's people said, but I would imagine the, the truth is somewhere in the middle. And I have talked enough about this. But anyways, um, I just wanted to come on here and talk about that. As I said, probably not the video most people thought I would be doing today. But uh, that video will be tomorrow, as that will be a very long video as well. And I wanted to get this stuff out of the way. But uh, definitely, if you can, check out the WC show. Um, the two boxing matches as well, both were very good. And um, if you're a boxing fan, I definitely think you're going to have to keep eye on Margarito and, that, and the hand wrapping thing. Could end up being a very big story might wind up just being something, um, you know, swept under the carpet, which I would imagine. But, uh, you know, does add, that does kind of, you know, it's not a good thing for Margarito, that is for sure. But, uh, anyways, other than that, I am out. Have a good one, everybody, and uh, I'm out.